So assembly woman, um, Pollen has taken over the chair of the health committee for the assembly. <clears throat> and so she has also taken over championing this bill. Um, we are um, very interested in hearing more about it. Um, and so with that, I would like to turn it over to Rachel Morse. All right. Um, one second, I'm just going to work on sharing my screen and figuring that out, and then we can get into the presentation. Okay. All right. Okay. So, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Rachel Morris, uh, and I am Assemblywoman Pollen's Health Committee Coordinator. Uh, the Assemblywoman is sad that she cannot be here with us today, but she wanted me to share all that I can about the New York Health Act. This legislation is very important to the Assemblywoman, and I'm proud to work on her. So, what is the New York Health Act? The New York Health Act was first introduced in 1991, and it strives to create a universal single payer health plan in New York State. Currently, health care is too expensive for many New Yorkers, leading some to go without insurance or face being underinsured. The New York Health Act will ensure that every New Yorker gets the health care that they need through a single payer plan. Single payer health insurance means that the cost of health insurance will be covered by a single public system. New York Health would be the single payer plan for all New Yorkers. This legislation is currently sponsored by Assemblywoman Amy Pollan in the Assembly and by Senator Gustavo Rivera in the Senate. Originally, it was introduced by Assemblyman Dick Gottfried, who's here with us today, and the bill has passed the Assembly five times in its 30-year history, but it has never passed the State Senate. Over the years, the bill has been slightly changed, but the message remained the same. All New Yorkers deserve access to health care. So, universal health care outside of the U.S., Universal health care may not be so familiar to us here in the U.S., but internationally, it is common in high-income countries. The U.S. is the only high-income country that does not guarantee health coverage to its population. In the United Kingdom, Australia, and Canada, a single-payer health care system is available to all citizens and legal residents. This chart here um, does a good job of showing how the U.S. compares to other high-income countries, where the one that's highlighted in the center. Most of the other countries have 100% enrollment and government compulsory health, compulsory health insurance. And while some do have high enrollment in voluntary health insurance, most residents are also covered by the government. The U.S. is much lower in health insurance coverage and is noticeably different than these other countries. Creating a universal health care system means that more people can get the care that they need. And countries with universal health care have better health outcomes. Oops, sorry. Um, the U.S. does have Medicare, which is a public health care system, but it is only available for those over 65 and those with certain health problems. Imagine a world where everyone is covered, no matter their age or health issues. The world, uh, this is a world that exists in these countries in the graph above, but not in the U.S. There are proposals at the federal level to create Medicare for all, which would create a single payer at the federal level, but New York State can make this happen now with the New York Health Act. The federal government won't act. It is time for New York State to take those next steps. So why do we need this? 76% um, of New Yorkers report being worried or very worried about affording health care in the future. And with health care rates in 2024 for individuals increasing 12.4% and small group rate plans increasing 7.4%, it is understandable that people are feeling this way. Uh, medical debt is another issue facing New Yorkers. 740,000 New Yorkers have some kind of medical debt, and that number includes those who may have health insurance already. The debt is incurred because they could not afford the health care that they were already paying for a lot of the time. Insurance plans do not always cover everything that a patient needs. So many people that have insurance are actually underinsured, meaning that they have health care, but it is not sufficient to cover everything that they need. New York State has a high rate of people who are insured, but that does not mean that they are always fully covered. Every year, about a third of people with health insurance have someone in their household who goes without needed health care. And with three quarters of New Yorkers worried about the affordability of their health care, it is time that we help the underinsured along with those without insurance. So what will the New York Health Act do? 
the New York Health Act will ensure 100% guaranteed coverage to all New Yorkers. There will be no co-pays, no premiums, and no deductibles. Primary care will be covered along with specialty care, dental, vision, hearing, long-term care, mental health, and reproductive care. And guaranteed prescription coverage along with being able to see the doctor of your choice and be at the hospital of your choice. It would also cover all of these benefits required by current state insurance law or provided by any state or local public employer, the essential plan, Child Health Plus, Medicare, or Medicaid, and any others added by the plan. All these benefits would apply to New York Health enrollees. Everyone would choose a primary care practitioner or other provider to provide care coordination, helping to get the care and follow up the patient needs, referrals, and navigating the system. As with most health coverage, New York Health covers healthcare services when a member is out of state, either because healthcare is needed while the member is traveling, or because there's a clinical reason for going to a particular out-of-state provider, or for individuals that are employed in New York but live outside the state. So who will be covered by this um, legislation? All New Yorkers. Uh, a New Yorker is someone who lives in the state or is employed full-time in New York, regardless of age, income, wealth, employment, or status. Those That includes those who are undocumented. The other New Yorkers who will be covered include out-of-state retirees. And those New Yorkers who work in the state but live elsewhere will also be covered. New York State has lost population in the past decade. And healthcare is a motivator for people to stay in the state and continue to support it. Uh, this is something that you know, we hope can encourage more people to stay in the state and receive health care. So this chart, I got it from the Campaign for New York Health, and I think it does a good job of showing how our current health care system works versus how it could work under the New York Health Act. So um, you pay for your health insurance, and then you get sick, and you visit an in-network doctor or hospital covered by an insurance plan. You pay a copay until you reach your deductible, um, and then you try to get approval for additional care, and then you pay more additional copays and expenses till you meet your out-of-pocket max. With this, with the New York Health Act, it would be a simpler system. You get sick, you go to the provider that you need, and you get the treatment that you need. The current system we have with in-network and out-of-network providers has always been confusing to me personally. It's crazy that I cannot go see any doctor that I want and that there are limits to who I can go see and when I can go see a doctor. And then I still might have uh, co-pays that are on top of it. And on a more personal note, I'm currently watching all of my friends turn 26 this year. And there's the common refrain of no more health care for me or I guess it's time for Medicaid which the more I think about it, it just makes me sad that we live in a system that doesn't support our young people. The New York Health Act would make 26 birthdays more normal again, and people wouldn't have to worry about losing their health insurance or switching their plans that year. So how does this all work? There will be no more regressive tax insurance premiums, deductibles, or co-pays. New York Health would be paid for based on ability to pay through a progressively graduated payroll-based tax paid at least 80% by employers and not more than 20% by employees and 100% by self-employed. And a progressively graduated tax based on other taxable income, such as capital gains, interest, and dividends. An individual's first $25,000 of income, 50,000 for Medicare recipients, would be exempt from the tax. Public employers that are already contributing more than 80% of the cost towards health benefits would be required to maintain the level of financial support that was in effect prior to enactment. Federal funds now receive for Medicare, Medicaid, the Essential Plan, Child Health Plus, and the Affordable Care Act would continue to come into New York, depending on the degree of federal cooperation or not, we'll get into that. Uh, New York Health would wrap around those programs or fold them into New York Health. In any event, people eligible for Medicare or the other programs would be entitled to every right and benefit they are entitled to under New York Health. The local share of Medicare funding, Medicaid funding, major burden on local property taxes would be ended. So how will healthcare providers be affected? One of the major ways things will change is that healthcare providers will be uh, paid well under this plan. New York Health will pay healthcare providers more than Medicare and Medicaid pay now. This is because New York Health rates by law must be related to the cost of delivering the service. This is a guarantee that no healthcare payer can offer today. Medicaid and Medicare today 
um, which makes up a large portion of healthcare, do not pay enough to cover provider costs. Providers will get paid more than what they are currently getting today, and this means they will no longer have to use revenue from commercial patients to subsidize Medicaid and Medicare patients. Because of our current complicated system, providers often spend a lot of their precious time and money fighting with third-party payers. This leads to high administrative costs and time loss that could be spent helping patients. The New York Health Act will save providers over $16 billion a year in administrative costs. There will be no specific payment rate or methodology. This is because rates and methodologies continue to evolve and it is important that the bill follows the trends and we can ensure providers are compensated fairly. Once the bill is passed initial plans, uh, initial plans will be formed, but one of the good things about this legislation is there's a chance to expand and change as it is needed. And this means that bills will always be paid in full every time. No more medical debt and no more unpaid bills. If everyone is covered, those unfortunate situations no longer have to continue. How will this affect insurance companies? Insurance companies in New York State will be impacted by this legislation. One of the main points of this bill bill is that private insurance will not be allowed to duplicate benefits offered under New York Health. Insurance companies have complicated networks, premiums, co-pays, and deductibles. Insurance companies often limit care instead of providing it, and the New York Health Act works to make sure that residents are completely covered by it so that they will no longer have to seek out insurance from a private company. On, let's go on to the savings of this. When it comes to health care, there is often a lot of discussion around cost and how expensive it will be. But New York Health will save money over time. No more insurance bureaucracy means $20 billion a year in savings, $16 billion in administrative costs, and drug prices will be cut by $18 billion using the bargaining power of 20 million consumers. Overall, this amounts to over $55 billion a year. These savings put money back into the pockets of New Yorkers. Patients would save over $300 billion a year on things like deductibles, co-pays, out-of-network charges, uninsured care, and out-of-pocket spending for long-term care. Almost every family would spend less in New York uh, health taxes than they do now paying for health care. And this will lead to an increase in take-home pay for almost all New Yorkers. So this chart um, does a good job of showing the savings that are possible with the New York Health Act. You have the net savings, 3.6%, and the total savings of 55 billion. And there are costs to it, totaling 43.9 billion, but those savings will outweigh the costs. And um, this previous chart showing savings in New York, but I think it's also important to see how much the US is currently spending on healthcare compared to other countries. I got this chart from the Campaign for New York Health, and it shows the percent of GDP spent on health at the U.S. compared to other high-income countries. In 2021, the U.S. spent 17.9% of its GDP on healthcare, nearly twice as much as the average of these countries that are also on the chart. The share of the economy spent on healthcare has been steadily increasing since the 1980s for all countries because healthcare spending uh, growth has outpaced economic growth in part because of advances in medical technologies, rising prices in the health se sector, and increased demand for services. And in the case of the United States, increased shareholder profits in the healthcare and pharmaceutical industries. It is for this reason that the United States healthcare spending is significantly outpacing its international counterparts, making it the country with the highest percent of GDP spent on healthcare. We need to get our spending under control, and it is proven that the New York Health Act can make that happen. So some of the benefits. Uh, first, it would help 92% of New Yorkers spend less on health care. Since New York Health would be based on ability to pay, this would help drive down costs. As many people currently spend a larger percentage of their income on insurance, it would help temper those costs. More people would seek medical care. When people have insurance, they can rely on, um, they can seek, they're more likely to seek the care that they need. If people's care is paid for, uh, they're more likely to treat smaller issues before they get out of hand and save money to do more preventative care. The New York Health Act would also be an upgrade to our seniors um, who are on Medicare. Seniors would have health care, prescriptions, vision, dental, hearing, and long-term care under the New York Health Act. 
Long-term care is not a part of any health plan in existence today. While there are costly long-term care supplemental insurance options, loopholes result in very restrictive benefits. The New York Health Act would help close this loophole and benefit our seniors. Another group positively affected would be small business owners. Currently, many small businesses face issues getting insurance for their employees that can compete with what large companies can offer. They can lose employees because that employee gets another job with better health care. The New York Health Act employees would not be relying on their insurance, so businesses or would not be relying on their employer for their insurance. So businesses would have one less thing to worry about when thinking about employee retention. So how does the administration of this program work? To help get the program started um, in the state, a board of trustees will be formed that will help advise the commissioner of health. The board will help devote, uh, develop proposals related to out-of-state retiree health benefits and the workers' compensation law and veterans' benefits. And the board will have the power to establish and amend regulations. 31 of the trustees will be appointed by the governor, with six who will be representatives of healthcare consumer advocacy. There's other parts of it that will be for other different um, parts of healthcare. And every trustee will be required to be under the New York Health Program. So they'll have that same insurance as everyone in New York State. There will also be six regional, um, six regional advisory councils created that will represent the needs and concerns of the specific region. The council will be made up of representatives of healthcare consumers, providers, municipal and county governments, along with organized labor. The council will help advise the board along with the government on matters related to New York Health and will help adopt community health improvement plans to promote healthcare access and quality in their regions. Now, federal waivers. To make the New York Health Plan work, getting a federal waiver would make it simpler to implement and would save federal money. The commissioner will seek all federal waivers and federal approvals related to Medicaid, Child Health Plus, Medicare, the Essential Plan, the Affordable Care Act, and any other appropriate federal program. Under the waivers and approvals, health coverage under those programs will be replaced and merged into New York Health, and New York Health will become a true single payer program. But it is possible to do the New York Health Act without a federal waiver. New York Health can be structured so it works for patients and providers as if it were a single program. The program would continue to draw down federal funds if it is done this way. The state will use state plan amendments and seek waivers to make use of federally subsidized health programs in New York Health. Those different sources of funding from health programs will be pooled with other New York Health funds and not be apparent to New York Health members or participating providers. Overall, the New York Health Act will promote moving away from the fee-for-service model. Now let's talk about uh, some misconceptions. Maybe you're wondering these exact questions right now. We've gone over a lot of information. <laughs> uh, one of the fears that is often talked about when discussing New York Health is that there won't be enough staff to go around and wait times to get care will increase. These claims and fears are based around the idea that providers will not be well paid under New York Health. However, as discussed in the previous slides, providers will be paid fairly. And since there is not as much admi administrative insurance work to handle, there will be more time for patients. This will incentivize more healthcare professionals to come to New York State, as well as helping expand the care we are able to give to the people of New York State. Another misconception is how, healthcare, uh, how health insurance companies can compete. But the real issue is how health insurance companies currently work. They compete by taking money from people who are not using their insurance as much and then hoping that people who will require a lot of care will go to another insurance company. Insurance companies often shift as much of the cost of care to the patient by raising deductibles and co-pays. New York Health will not do that and will allow for consumers to have health care that supports them and does not focus on profit and competition. And let's talk about Vermont's um, attempt at this. While the New York Health Act remains revolutionary, it is important to point out that it is not the first single payer healthcare system voted on by a US state. In 2011, Vermont, our neighbor to the North, passed H202, a bill that created a single payer and unified health system. The passage of the bill created Green Mountain Care, which would be a state funded and managed insurance pool 
that would provide coverage to residents. However, by 2013, the plan was still being worked on and nothing had gone into effect and it had yet to get approval by the federal government and was not able to use federal health finances to fund the state program. Vermont was not able to figure out how to address the money that they would need to fund the bill. And by 2014, they fully abandoned the plan. The reasons given were taxes and the burden that businesses would face. Vermont was not able to make single payer happen at the state level. But that does not mean that New York has to fail too. New York and Vermont are very different states, with New York being able to generate more revenue by having a graduated assessment based on ability to pay more. So, uh, so then Vermont was going to be able to have. New York's tax bracket system would make it easier to fund a program like this, and New York would not have to rely on getting a federal waiver so heavily as Vermont did. Vermont showed that it is possible to pass single payer health care at the state level. And while it did not fully succeed, it has showed uh, New York the steps we need to take to make it succeed here. Now let's talk about some of the opposition. Uh, I think it's also important to not acknowledge this opposition. The insurance and pharmaceutical industry is currently overwhelmingly against this legislation. This bill would upend a lot of the ways that health insurance works in the state. And it's understandable that they're worried about how their old model of doing things would be impacted by this legislation. We believe that it is important that we do everything we can to raise awareness about this bill. 70% of Americans support a single payer option. That's a lot of people. And bringing together a coalition of supporters is something that the campaign for New York Health is trying to do. And events like this are a way that um, we can raise awareness and get people up to speed on this bill and build more support. And beyond building a coalition outside of the assembly, it's also important to note that the only way this bill gets done is if the New York Assembly and the New York Senate both, both passed the bill. The Senate has never passed the New York Health Act, and the Assembly has not passed it recently. We hope that we can bring both houses together in the future to work to pass this legislation. Now we've talked about some of the issues, let's talk about the supporters. The bill currently has strong union support across New York State. This includes New York State nurses, uh, United Auto Workers, 1199 SEIU, RWDSU, the Capital District Area, AFL-CIO, and UUP. The New York Health Act will ensure that unions in New York do not have to negotiate health care. Health care is one of the biggest focuses unions have, but with New York Health, unions will not have to risk their health care when they negotiate and they can focus on other issues. Many unions have expressed concerns over the health care that they have fought so hard for, um, but it is important to remember that the New York Health Act will ensure that everything that was negotiated for them will be covered. Unions won't be losing health care. Instead, it will free up more negotiating time to focus on labor practices and whatever other important issues that those workers are facing. And to, despite the bill not having passed the Assembly or Senate yet the session, the bill already has a serious amount of support. The bill in the Assembly has 58 co-sponsors and counting, and in the Senate, the bill has 33 co-sponsors and counting. It is also important to acknowledge that there has uh, been enough support in the past um, that it has passed in the Assembly. If the bill has passed once, it's more likely that it could pass again. It has not yet passed the Senate, but there's still time. So in conclusion, thank you so much for taking the time today to listen to my presentation about the New York Health Act. If you're part of an organization and this presentation has moved you, I encourage you to look into the campaign for New York Health. Uh, they have volunteer opportunities and lobby days to sign up for. But overall, I hope that today you learned more about a bill that can hopefully reshape New York health care as we know it. And while the bill may not pass tomorrow, it's important that we work together to educate as many people as we can and work to push it forward. Thanks. So I can turn it over uh, for any questions.